guys welcome back to another reading vlog i'm finally starting one on monday at the beginning of the week um i have a lot of reading updates i managed to finish two books over the weekend and this week might be like a little crazy i have so many exams <laughs> and appointments doctor's appointments other appointments it's just gonna be like not really unpleasant, but I think it's going to be just chock full of errands and doing stuff I wouldn't really choose to do with my own time, if that makes sense. But I do want to focus on the good stuff. So I have some books to discuss. I just made some chamomile tea and I'm feeling very relaxed. So I did manage to finish We Hunt the Flame over the weekend. And like I predicted in my last vlog, the ending did get so much better. Basically, if I could explain this book, the first 150 pages are four stars. The last 150 pages are also four stars. But then the middle, like 200 pages to maybe 250, I can't remember. Yeah, like 269 to be exact, are just awful like they're kind of awful the story goes nowhere it falls apart nothing happens i was so interested in the beginning and then it just lost me it got really really boring and then when it wrapped up in the end i was like why couldn't we have this quality the whole way through because it was so good at the end i loved the ending i loved like what goes on but just the whole middle slog of this book was so painful to get through that like I, I had to give it three stars because it, it wasn't that great. But you'll definitely see more of my thoughts on that in my wrap up. But yeah, I was just so disappointed with it. Like I know it ended nicely, which I enjoyed, but everything else was just not good. Someone is very aggressively knocking on my neighbor's door. And then I picked up this book on Scribd called Daughter of the Pirate King by Trisha Levenseller. I think I mentioned this. Um, and it was so easy to get through so quick that I finished it in a day, <laughs> which was kind of whatever but um this was a mess i gave it two stars it wasn't what i was expecting at all it was basically just a romance it just kind of felt like not necessarily one of those harlequin like little romance smut books but like kind of a little bit like a ya version of that i only picked this up because it was a pirate book i love pirate books i haven't read enough of them i just want more but daughter of the pirate king was not what I was looking for. Like there was like, it it was like the stereotypical kind of Disney pirate book where no one describes anything about pirating, but it's all like our main character, Alosa, who is the daughter of like the pirate king of the sea and whatnot. She just keeps getting kidnapped and kidnapped and like, what is going on in my apartment building today? What are these people doing? I'm just trying to run a successful booktube channel. It was just like, whatever. I enjoy witty banter. That is like, I will die for witty banter between two love interests or like enemies to lovers with witty banter. I'm so there, but like this was just awful. It felt like it had no plot. There was no substance. It was just romance. And like, that was fine. Cause I enjoyed it purely on like kind of that level, but it just wasn't what I was expecting. And it, it wasn't that good so i give it two stars i think i'm officially out of my reading slump though and this week i just want to read so many books and just like kind of catch up on my february tbr because it's almost the end of the month and i've only read eight books i think which is kind of low for me but um i know that's still good so the next book that i picked up was the wind in the willows by kenneth graham um <laughs> this was kind of like a childhood favorite of mine but i'd never actually read the book i've only seen the movie the animated film it is so old i can't remember which one it is but like it gave me nightmares um but the wind in the willows i just i have such a fond place for it in my heart but i've never actually read the little story so i decided to pick up the audiobook i think it's only five hours long so i should be able to pretty quickly finish this off. I literally just started it this morning, so that's one of my reads for the week. And then I think I do keep mentioning Clockwork Angel by Cassandra Clare, which is um, the Infernal Devices book one. Um, and I do want to start that one either today or tomorrow as well. So those are my two reads for sure. I know I'm going to read this week and then probably something else I'll add in the mix. But um, fun fact, I've actually only ever read City of Bones by Cassandra Clare like years and years ago and I didn't like it at all. So someone suggested that I try the Clockwork or the Infernal Devices series instead, which I know they're very interconnected. But um, yeah, but those are my reading plans for this week.
I also have my midterm exam tomorrow for British literature, so I've been studying a lot. I made this whole little booklet, kind of like a master set notes of my lecture notes and like stuff. Um, that I need to know. There's like actually a lot so if you're curious the works that I have to basically know everything about and be prepared to write upon for the test are Keats, his two odes, Odes to a Nightingale and Ode on a Grecian Urn. Then we have Frankenstein by Mary Shelley, um, My Last Duchess by Robert Browning, uh, Yeats, his two poems, No Second Troy and Lita and the Swan. Um, C.S. Eliot, his essay, Tradition and the Individual Talent, and then his poem, uh, The Love Song of J. Alfred Prufrock, which is... Uh, and then we have Auden and his two poems, Musée des Beaux-Arts and The Shield of Achilles, and finally Endgame by Beckett. So quite a bit. <laughs> I'll just like take you through a little bit of my notes and like kind of how I do it. Okay, I don't know which one is a good example to use. Maybe, like, what's a good one? Um, <laughs> yeah. So, Lita and the Swan is probably a good one. And so, basically, first in, like, blue or whatever, I just kind of describe the context a little bit. And then I'll kind of put the purple as, like, semicolons to this as a little kind of little entry about it. I'll, like, highlight in, um, kind of yellowish what I think is like really really important what I have to remember um so yeah and then uh, I'll put quotes that I want to memorize like either from the poem or from um uh, for example philosophers or any other thing like that that might help so I can like you know quote in like so that I can directly quote on the test which always I think impresses people but then you have to be really careful not to like over quote because I think I have a problem with that and then it's like other people's words tend to gobble up my own which is not what they want to see and then I'll kind of highlight in green like big uh, kind of ideas or concepts and uh, stuff like that so that's kind of how I do it obviously I have my actual notes from lecture here that are really helpful and I just kind of go through and take out the stuff that like I really want to condense it down to type of thing and then I'll read over like the works again like this is the shield of Achilles and then um I'll pull out some quotes to kind of work in but I'm almost done like I said I only have um Beckett to do obviously his end game and then I'm gonna go over just basically say the quotes out loud over and over again until I memorize them and hopefully I'll be ready for tomorrow. I'm actually going to be leaving the apartment in a few minutes to go to a doctor's appointment so that'll be fun. I'm just really like over them. I don't want to go to doctor's appointments anymore. It's like they're not really that helpful. They basically just tell me the same thing over and over again for my concussion, what I need to be doing, but I do need to get them to fill out some medical forms for me and also uh, I think I'm supposed to be having like an appointment or I'm on a wait list to see a neuro optometrist, which is really cool. Um, I didn't even know that they existed, that that kind of line of medicine or optometry existed, so that's interesting. You learn a lot of things when you get a brain injury that you didn't really think about before, um, and obviously not all of them are fun, but that one's kind of cool, so I'm going to head out in probably 25-ish minutes, maybe 20 minutes, and go to the doctor's appointment, and then I'm going to come back. I think I'm going to try to make ramen for dinner. I have a lot of vegetable broth that I need to use up. Very exciting. Um... And then I do really need to keep studying for this. And then as soon as I'm done writing this test tomorrow, I need to like get on my essay for Ghost Written by David Mitchell, also for the same class because I really put it off. Obviously, I wasn't feeling well and I was puking my guts out, so it's understandable, but it's due on the 12th of March, which is really quickly coming up when you think about it. And it is a huge essay that I want to put as much effort as I can into it. So, yeah. But I'm just going to probably study a little bit more and then head out the door.
Hey there, it's Tuesday now. I actually just got back from the grocery store. Um, I didn't get a lot of stuff. I might need to go back later this week, but I just got some baby carrots. I got um, some more coffee for my coffee maker because I'm almost out. And then I got some cereal, strawberries, tofu. I like getting firm tofu. That's pretty much the only kind I get. A whole bunch of bananas, broccoli, and green pepper. So, um, yeah. <laughs> I'm kind of mad at myself that I didn't get any snacks. Oh my gosh, it has just been such a long day. It's already 4.30. Um, this morning, a bunch of things happened that, like, I just don't really want to talk about because they're not fun or, like, they're not really what I want to really share or get into just because it's not like super exciting but um i just want to focus on the good things today and over the weekend my good friend actually taught me how to embroider um she learned and then she kind of like taught me and i'm like really bad at it but i also just started um so the first thing i made <laughs> was a circle i don't think you can even see that it's just a little circle i was just you know practicing how to do it and then i tried to make the deathly hollow sign but it is very crooked, obviously. But I was quite proud of myself. I have never learned how to sew or anything like that. The only thing I really had experience with is corking when I was little, but um, it's, it was just so much fun. And now it's really got me into the mood to first of all want to learn how to sew, but also like just want to keep embroidering literally everything. So I got some string from home and I stole a scarf that like I just I'm not gonna wear ever again so I thought I could practice on it and I don't know if this looks more like a fox or like a squirrel but I did this one today I just think he is so cute and like I know it's not very good still but I didn't use like a stencil or anything it was just freehand um and I'm I'm honestly kind of a little bit proud of my little squirrel fox thing I just think he is adorable and I can like really see myself getting into embroidery or cross stitching um, it's very on brand, I think, with my grandma aesthetic, so I was quite happy with my little squirrel man. Also something that's putting me in a really good mood is the audiobook I'm currently listening to. I'm actually listening to two, but the one that is just giving me like such cozy vibes is definitely The Wind in the Willows by Kenneth Graham. I actually have an illustrated version and just like a regular book version of it, but it is just so sweet. I think I was talking about how I was obsessed with the movie when I was younger, but this book is just absolutely like the cutest, sweetest thing ever. It has such beautiful designs and drawings, and I'm a good amount of the way through. I think I'm on like chapter five or something. Um, I think I'm almost 50% of the way through, so um, I'm really, really enjoying it. And then I've also been listening a lot today to Clockwork... Uh, Yes, Clockwork Angel by Cassandra Clare. Um, and I'm like loosely enjoying it. I'm liking it a lot more than The City of Bones. I think just because it's set in 1878 in London, which I am there no matter what genre or what's going on or what the situation is. If it is like the Victorian period, I am there reading that book. So I think that's the only reason why I'm enjoying it. I think right now I'm gonna go listen to some ASMR and have a nap because it has been a day. Like it's been a really bad day today and like I just need to somehow lift it up and turn it around and make it better because it's just been really bad, honestly. That is what I'm gonna do and then I'm really hoping to make like a really good yummy dinner later. So I'll probably show you that and I'll update you on the wind and the willow situation because it's making me really happy. I'm on my second cup of coffee. I am almost done the wind in the willows. I have like two chapters left, I think. So I'll be finishing that one. And then I'm just in the mood to like, I really want to try reading a book today with my own eyes, which is like very scary, but like, I just want to give it a shot and see how it goes. But I might go outside today. It's blizzarding. So I always love that so much. And then I'll probably just tidy up the apartment. I want to film a video, so. Those are kind of my plans. Okay, hi. I also just finished The Wind in the Willows by Kenneth Graham. I don't think I ever even talked about this book. I just said I was reading it. Basically, if you don't know what this little guy is about, we're following four animals 
toad, badger, rat, and mole. And they're kind of living in Edwardian England, going around, doing their animal things. Um, toad is just the worst character I've ever met. When I was little, I had nightmares about him. I don't know why. He gets addicted and obsessed with motor cars which is just so funny to me and I know obviously why Kenneth Graham decided to do that but um, he just like hot wires these motor cars, steals them, crashes them. He's like obsessed with automobiles and it's just so funny. Um, I ended up giving this three stars. Like I enjoyed it but there were some parts of it where I was just like why is he going on and on about this. However some of the lines in here are just so cozy, so sweet, so beautiful. The descriptions of nature and the animals. Okay I also just wanted to read you guys this little section from The Wind in the Willows. It's probably my favorite section in the whole book. It's so sweet. Um, it's the part where Mole, one of our characters, has just gotten lost in the very scary, very kind of wintry um, wild wood and his friend Rat has just come and saved him and then together they happen upon Badger's doorstep and Badger who's kind of been this figure of uh, intimidation invites them in and they have kind of dinner together and it was just so sweet I loved it so much it gave me such like wonderful cozy vibe so but I just wanted to read it really quickly because it made me really happy <clears throat> okay <laughs> In the middle of the room stood a long table of plain boards placed on trestles, with benches down each side. At one end of it, where an armchair stood pushed back, were spread the remains of the badger's plain but ample supper. Rows of spotless plates winked from the shelves of the dresser at the far end of the room, and from the rafters overhead hung hams, bundles of dried herbs, nets of onions, and baskets of eggs. It seemed a place where heroes could fitly feast after victory, where weary harvesters could line up in scores along the table and keep their harvest with mirth and song, or where two or three friends of simple tastes could sit about as they pleased and eat and smoke and talk in comfort and contentment. The ruddy brick floor smiled up at the smoky ceiling. The oaken settles, shiny with long wear, exchanged cheerful glances with each other. Plates on the dresser grinned at pots on the shelf and the merry firelight flickered and played over everything without distinction. The kindly badger thrust them down on a settle to toast themselves at the fire and bade them remove their wet coats and boots. In the embracing light and warmth, warm and dry at last, with weary legs propped up in front of them and a suggestive clink of plates being arranged on the table behind, it seemed to the storm-driven animals, now in safe anchorage, that the cold and trackless wild wood just left outside was miles and miles away, and all that they had suffered in it a half-forgotten dream. That just like really reminds me of playing outside in the cold winter for hours and hours and hours um, and you just get so cold and your nose is so red and you're so like wet and damp and like the snow has literally just sunk into all of your snow wear and then finally someone calls you inside and they're like hey come in out of the cold into the warm and like dinner's almost ready or they'll be like can I make you a hot chocolate and you'll sit there and you take off your boots and you put on warmer clothes and you sit by a fire and there's toast and tea and like that feeling of like just being cared for after being cold it's a very specific feeling <laughs> but it really reminded me of like my childhood and winters where I would just play outside for hours until like it was just not sensible to be outdoors anymore but just like coming in and like closing your eyes on the couch and you hear someone like preparing food all around you and it's like cozy and warm that's just like what it reminded me of so I just wanted to share that because it was really nice so <laughs> I also actually wanted to choose a book today to try and read with my own eyeballs for the first time so uh, <laughs> come with me as I choose one from my bookshelf I kind of wanted to be on the shorter side just to see if I can make any progress with it um, and kind of just feel good about being able to finish it potentially. So it might be a classic because I haven't read that many classics in February. February was kind of a heavy YA month for me, which is pretty unusual. Normally I feel like my wrap ups just contain a lot of classics and adult um, and definitely a lot of nonfiction recently. But um, okay, let's find a short classic to put in the mix if that is possible. Um, okay, this one's pretty short. <laughs> the top shelf of my bookshelf and like the very top shelf I can't reach. Like I should realistically get a step stool but I will just hop. Prometheus Unbound is pretty short by Percy Bysshe Shelley. It is about 85 pages long and it is a play. This would be really interesting. I've been wanting to read this for forever. 
This is an option. Let's see. Maybe poetry. I haven't read any poetry this month. Millions is pretty short too. I don't know. <laughs> Let's read War and Peace. That seems like a good idea. Um, oh, this one's very short. This is also a play which I love. It's Lady Windermere's Fan by Oscar Wilde. I recently picked this up. Um, and this one's very short as well. It's like 50 pages. So we've got two. Let's see. Ugh, I'll just reread Rilke. What am I talking about? Hmm. I could reread The Great Gatsby, I don't know. A lot of classics are quite lengthy, so... I really do want to read Snow Country. I wanted to read Snow Country this winter. Um, this one's 170 pages, so... But it is, the font size is very big, so maybe... I think I'm buddy reading this with someone, though, so maybe not. Ugh, oh, there's just so many. The Crucible. Why am I just picking all the plays? Maybe I'm just in the mood for straight up dialogue. Okay. Also, I have no more room on my bookshelf. Oh my gosh. The Crucible is a short one, and I did have that on my February TBR. I did have it on my February TBR. It's like a hundred pages. Oh, I don't know. All right, let's switch it up. Let's look at my other bookshelf. Um, probably none of these. In terms of children's books, I've literally read them all. So, I've read almost everything on the shelf. I've read everything on the shelf. Um, okay, honestly, there's nothing over here. Uh, I could read Blood of Elves. Okay. Blood of Elves, I've heard, is just a really fast-paced book, although it is quite long. So maybe not. Okay, we have one more shelf left. Hello there. Um, these are books I read this month. This is my Harry Potter shelf, and then we have nonfiction. I've honestly been eyeing up Chinese Myths and Legends by Chen Lan Shan for a while now, and it is pretty short. So, I don't know. I don't know. This one's honestly a maybe as well. <laughs> okay, so I think I'm just gonna decide between Prometheus Unbound, Lady Windermere's Fan, or Chinese myths and legends. In terms of the oldest one I've had, it would be the Chinese myths. But in terms of the one I most want to read, it would be Prometheus Unbound. In terms of the shortest one, Lady Windermere's fan. So they all have different advantages, you know? Uh, guys, I gotta do it. I think I'm gonna go with Prometheus Unbound. It's the one I wanna read the most, um, so I'm gonna give it a shot. Okay, so I'm literally two pages through Prometheus Unbound, and I'm already literally tabbing every single page. You guys, it is so good. Let me read this one part. Percy Shelley never disappoints me. Okay, here we go. So, this is a voice that Prometheus hears on the wind. From the mountains, thrice 300,000 years, o'er the earthquake's couch we stood. Oft, as men convulsed with fears, we trembled in our multitude. From the springs, thunderbolts had parched our water, we had been stained with bitter blood, and had run mute mid shrieks of slaughter through a city and a solitude. It hits so hard. It's just so... I, I can't even call it beautiful. That's not an appropriate enough word. And then we hear the second voice replying, never such a sound before, talking about Prometheus's like outcry of pain and suffering never such a sound before to the indian waves we bore a pilot to sleep on the howling sea leaped up from the deck in agony and heard and cried ah woe is me and died as mad as the wild waves be
it's just like you read something and all, the words like just seep into your skin and like go exactly where they need to go it's like eating a healthy diet of fruits and vegetables but it's like healthy words and just like beautiful it's just like language that you want it's like a food pyramid like all this stuff is definitely at the top and obviously i've been reading a lot of trashy ya that i haven't been enjoying and for me that's definitely at the bottom obviously there's ya and adult books that i love but a lot of adult books and a lot of fiction is just completely trash and we all know that um but this just like oh my gosh it's good for my soul i feel it extending my lifespan extending the years of my life and Oh my gosh, I already can really like recommend this. I've only read a little book of Percy Bysshe Shelley's poetry, so I'm really, really excited um, to read this. So, and then we hear Prometheus speak, um, and he says, Know ye not me, the Titan, he who made his agony the barrier to your else all conquering foe? And it's just so sad. Oh my gosh. So good. All right, so one of the things on my to-do list today was to sew my star pajamas that have had a hole in them for literally like five years now or something, four years. It's a very big hole right here and they're just too cozy. I don't want to get rid of them. So I'm going to put my new skills to the test. Um, I feel like it's a cool skill. If you suddenly get transported back in time and suddenly you're in the Scottish Highlands and it's 1745 or 43, which you know unheard of but if that happens like you know how to stitch up someone's arm and that's that's super valuable so we're gonna see how well this goes um maybe this can be like a regular thing on my channel <laughs> if i get really good at it we can just have chats while i um so and it is quite relaxing like it is very relaxing i feel like cersei um, so it is now 12.30 almost. I just finished listening to my podcast of The Office Ladies and it is really making me want to rewatch The Office. Like, it is honestly a really good show. I know some people can't stand it because, like, it is obviously super cringy at some parts, which, like, is a power and that's really cool that it can make you feel that way. But I do really like it, honestly. <laughs> Um, other TV shows, <laughs> since we're on the topic, that I really do love, Peaky Blinders is probably my favorite drama. Um, the cinematography, beautiful. Killian Murphy, beautiful. I would really, really recommend. It's definitely a darker show, but I really like that. So, um, other TV shows I really, really like, <sighs> The Mandalorian really like the mandalorian i can't tell you how much i like the mandalorian um what else i used to watch a lot of what did i used to watch friends like i used to watch friends a lot but it's it's just so dated and some parts i'm like oh my gosh i can't believe they just said that kind of thing color does not really match the pants but like honestly i'm fine with that i think this weekend i'll probably go out to michael's or a craft store and get like embroidery materials some new string i only have like one thing of blue string and one thing of orange so i'll probably get some more i might get some of those like um embroidery circle things i don't know the proper term um so that's another thing um uh, today is wednesday like i said um i don't have that many more plans for this week i know i have to go up to uni i think tomorrow for an appointment for with my academic counseling so that'll be interesting um for the rest of the day, I think I want to film a little bit of my ASMR video that I want to try. Like, I really don't know if I'm going to upload it just because I have some qualms and <laughs> problems and just, like, things I'm nervous about in terms of that. But I think it'd just be really fun, especially if it's, like, bookish ASMR. And people do comment all the time that they enjoy my voice, which, like, is very bizarre for me because it's such a normal thing to hate your own voice especially when you are editing clips of yourself talking all the time i think i'm getting sick and um it can get really annoying so it's always so bizarre to me when people are like i love your voice and i'm like but why <laughs> why do you so i don't know i don't know about it but we'll see i am done my little sewing now i'll probably gonna try and decide on my next design for um my scarf that i'm making so we'll see oh my gosh i have been sitting here editing for way too long 
I had over an hour of footage for my Q&A video. I had like an hour and 10 minutes and right now I'm only, I've only chopped it down to 56 minutes and like I don't want to cut any questions. I want to leave them all in and like there were even some questions that I couldn't get to when I first filmed it so like I don't know. I don't know what I'm gonna do. <laughs> I feel like uploading a 50 minute long video would be fine. It's just like a lot and I'm like getting so annoyed <laughs> with hearing myself talk. Um, I was also working on my vlog this week because I think I want to upload that on Saturday. I never know whether to upload vlogs on Saturday or Sunday. These are kind of the ones I have in the works. Obviously we have my vlog and then the Q&A and then this is like my entire physical TBR which I need to work on. But yeah, that's ridiculous. I need to calm down. It's almost three o'clock right now. I don't know what I'm gonna do. I think I want to trim my bangs. Like they're getting way too long again. But I also might be working on something secret right now with the picture of Dorian Gray. So um, I might try and work on that for a little bit. Like for how long? Oh. <laughs> Maybe, probably. So I just feel like things are like worse again. So yeah, 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 absolutely. Oh my gosh. <laughs> so I just got off the phone with my grandma. I don't know why I'm crying. <laughs> this is gonna be like a weekly recurring thing in vlogs. Um, I'm just, I'm really close with my grandma and I really miss her. Um, She's currently in Florida. <laughs> she vacations in Florida over the winter with her boyfriend, which is very, so cute. They have like a trailer down there. Um, so she's gone for like half the year. Um, and some days I just like, I just really miss my grandma. <laughs> she is honestly the kindest person I know in my life. Um, <laughs> She's just amazing. She is so kind um, and so loving. And we haven't, like, we haven't called for a couple weeks and just, like, to hear her voice, um, so nice. And, like, I don't ever want to hang up the phone. Um, and I just can't wait till she gets home. I still have a couple months to go. Um, <laughs> Oh man, but yeah, I just miss her so much and like There's some people who you don't want to talk to about certain problems or certain things in your life and like When I first got my concussion and I was just like I completely isolated myself from all of my friends I stopped doing booktube. Obviously I was gone for months um, I didn't want to talk to anyone but like the only person I would talk to was her um she was the only person I wanted to talk to just because like you just feel so loved and understood um, I just wish everyone could have someone like her honestly you guys she is the, the nicest person and if I could be like 2% a quarter like her like literally any small sliver if I could be a little bit like her all right, it is four o'clock. I'm a mess. <laughs> oh, I'm also just so emotional this week, so I apologize. <laughs> Actually, I don't really apologize. This is totally okay, you guys. It's okay to cry um, from happiness and sadness. I think it's a little bit of a mix, but um, it's just been a really bad week so far. <laughs> it's only Wednesday. <laughs> Today's been a really better day, and talking to her was was just really nice so um i'm sorry my voice is so quaky yuck i'm gonna go pull myself together maybe send her a really loving email because we email back and forth she's the coolest grandma as well oh my gosh i just want to like tell you guys so much about my grandma she loves cars she loves driving very fast she's 85 almost and she still like has her driver's license she loves speeding <laughs> so if you see someone getting pulled over on like the florida state line or something it's probably my grandmother um she is just amazing she will start food fights with you she will like do your makeup she will give you shit for like the stuff that you need to be given shit for she is just oh my gosh she's my hero she is the most badass person i know but also 
the most beautiful and the most kind. So I'm gonna stop rambling about my grandmother and I'm gonna go watch some booktube. Good morning guys, it is Thursday. I actually have to leave in a few minutes to head into uni for an appointment and then I might be coming back. It like snowed so much last night that the roads aren't really clear so we'll see how that goes. But yeah, I'm gonna head into uni, I'm gonna come back and then I think I'm gonna do some more baking because um, I'm just in the mood to bake. Maybe I'll make some cookies or like I don't even know. I might just make chocolate chip cookies again because everyone loved them. When I took them over to my friend's house, they ate them all. So um, I'm going to make some more because I think I have a friend coming over tomorrow. So um, yeah. I might try something a little bit different or I might make a batch of chocolate chip cookies and then maybe a batch of like cinnamon or molasses. I feel like no one likes cinnamon or molasses cookies. No one really likes ginger cinnamon molasses cookies, but that's my favorite kind of cookie. I love molasses, and it is such a pleasing word to say. I don't know. But yeah, and then I think my plans for the rest of the day, I really want to read more of Prometheus Unbound, <laughs> which, like, it's not for school or anything. I just really want to read it. And then I have the strange urge to, like, work on my book right now, even though I just kind of want to leave it still and let it, like, sit and stagnate and... Maybe I'll just plan some more of it and something. Maybe plot some more like chapters or whatnot, outline stuff. It's really, really cold today. So um, I'm gonna bundle up, head out the door, and then I'll be back. Hey guys, it is Friday now, and I basically didn't film anything yesterday, I don't think, but there's the snow plow. But yeah, I went to uni, got some stuff sorted out, thankfully, and then I came home and made literally, you probably saw the biggest batch of cookies. I don't have any friends to eat the cookies with. Like, I have someone coming over today, my friend Samantha, who I think I've mentioned, but um, that's a lot of cookies for two gals, so I don't know what I'm gonna do with them all. I don't know why I made so many either. Anyway. Last night I went to the library as well um, because I had to get some ingredients for the cookies but I picked up this book called Dragon Pearl by Yoon Ha Lee and I have it on Libby as well so I'm currently listening to it on audiobook but it is a children's sci-fi Korean folklore quest adventure book um, and I'm really liking it so far so basically um, this does deal with the Korean folklore of the Gumiho. Lots of books have come out recently about that, like Shadow of the Fox, uh, Wicked Fox, and all of those books. So this one's really interesting. Um, it's a really cool take as well because it's like obviously sci-fi, it's set in the future, we're following our main character Min who lives on this planet. She finds out that her brother's gone missing from kind of his space squadron and she decides to set out and find him because the investigator um, that's also a thing. No one likes the fox spirits. Everyone is very prejudiced, very hateful towards them, so her family kind of has to hide the fact that they are a Gumiho, so um, Mean sets out herself to find her brother, who is supposedly trying to find the Dragon Pearl, which can kind of like form or terraform planets and make things better. So um, I'm really enjoying it. I really do adore sci-fi. I haven't read enough of it. I have a whole shelf dedicated to it over there, but like I could go with so much more, so I'm on page 50 right now, so I'm really liking it. I just started it last night, so I'll probably finish this one over the weekend. It is quite a short book, but um, I'm going to be reading this, and then Prometheus Unbound, and then actually right now I'm going to be filming my February wrap-up, so that's what I'm going to go to. Alright, I look like a crazy person because I just woke up from a nap, but it's around 4.30 right now, and I just wanted to close off the vlog. Um, I had a really good visit with my friend. We ate a lot of cookies, talked a lot, had some tea. It was so nice to catch up with her and see her. So it's a pretty good end to a pretty bad week. And I hope wherever you are, you're just like having a good day. I just wish honestly kindness and happiness onto everyone and into everyone's lives. So um, thank you so much for watching this video and spending your time here and coming along with me on honestly a pretty bad week. I don't think it really seemed like that because I just don't, I just don't, I don't know. I don't want to super focus on the negative and just talk about that, but 
um, I'm hoping for all the good <laughs> things this weekend and next week. So yeah, but once again, thank you for being here and I'll see you in the next vlog. Ciao.